Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Alex and you are watching BC Adventure. I'm running on about two hours sleep today and I had some free time so I figured why not bang out another tutorial that's actually a fairly important one. We all kind of put off backing up our systems or just kind of relying on whatever systems in place uh, by default to back up and restore our systems. But it's important that we have a reliable um, off client backup solution so that if anything were to go wrong, we could restore our systems back to the way they originally were. So the way we're going to do that is by looking at an application in the community apps platform called your backup, you uh, are backup, and it's super simple to deploy. We're going to make it publicly facing as well so we can connect our devices that uh, maybe we use outside of the home, you know, like a laptop or, uh, you know, maybe we have a, a home office somewhere outside of the home or you, you, you kind of get what I'm saying here. But um, this application is uh, it's really versatile works on all platforms, um, you know, like computer platforms. So Linux, Mac and Windows. And um, it's super simple and does a full backup of your system, or you can select what you want to back up. Uh, the best part about this is it's free. There's no subscription. You control your data. And uh, again, it's super simple to get deployed. So let's jump into it and get started. All right. So to get started, we're going to need to head on over to our community applications tab. And we are going to search for UR Backup. And we're going to use not the bin hex one. We're going to use just the your backup application and we're going to do install. Now, a couple things we need to do for this. Uh, first thing we need to do is change the network type to bridge uh, or BR0 custom network. And, uh, what you're going to want to do is set a static IP address. Now it's on you to make sure you are picking an IP address that works or is open and free on your network. So you'll want to download an app for your phone, uh, something like net analyzer, and that'll let you scan your network and see which IPs you have open. Uh, the second thing I'm going to do is set this as a privilege container. And then the third thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually change this default backup folder. Um, I already have a backup folder on my server, so I'm going to go ahead and use that. And I'm going to select the year backup folder that I've already created. And then from there, I'm going to click save. And then all I need to do is scroll to the bottom and click apply. So what this is going to do is it's going to download the application, uh, the Docker application and get it installed on our Unraid server. So this is a fairly small container, just under 100 megs, uh, actually you know, about 80 megs, and it's already done. So just going to click done, going to head on over to our Docker tab. And for good measure, I'm just going to pull the logs, make sure it's good to go. Nope, looks like it's good now. Okay. So we can go ahead and open up the web UI. So I just want to make note of the port here. It's 55414. So we're going to need that to get uh, set up on our uh, client device. So what I've done is I've spun up a Windows 10 virtual machine on my Unraid server. And I'm going to show you how to get this application installed on Windows 10. Um, like I said, uh, this application can be installed on Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Windows servers, as well as QNAP NAS servers and a host of whole other devices. So this is a very well supported uh, backup solution. So we know what IP we need to go to in order to get this set up. But before we get started on that, I actually want to make sure that we are setting a administrator user. So to do that, you just go to settings and then users and then create user. Now, the reason you want to do that is because we want to publicly face this. So we don't want anyone getting into our backup settings that shouldn't be there. So what I'm going to do is just click create user and then it defaults the admin account. And we're going to set a strong password that keeps our data safe. 
So that's gone ahead and created now. So when we click back, it is going to ask us to put that password in. All right, so now we're good to go to get started on our virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this console. And I'm going to open up a browser and I'm going to head on over to the IP address that we set our instance to. So you're going to have to log in with your password, of course. And here we can now add this client to be backed up. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to click add new client. And then the name, I'm just going to name this test VM and then add client. So two things we need to do, and this is for good measure. You probably won't need to do this, but just in case we're going to copy our authentication key. And then here we can actually download a pre-configured installation uh, media for the year backup software that has our authentication key built right into it. So I'm going to do that by just clicking the download pre-configured client installer for Windows. And then after that's done, we can open up that folder and we're going to want to right click and run as administrator. So it is going to give you a warning that uh, it was downloaded from the internet. Just click OK or run anyway. Uh, the reason you're getting that warning is because uh, we downloaded it from our Unraid server. So it's going to go ahead and start running the installation now. And then once it's done the installation, it's going to give us some options to select how we want to back up our system. So here it's going to ask uh, what file sets we want to back up and uh, what volumes we want to back up. So I'm just going to stick with the recommended settings. And then from here, we actually need to configure uh, where we're pointing this, um, uh, this backup to. So to do that, we just need to right click and we're going to go to settings. And then we're going to make sure that our client is uh, the client name is correct, which it is test VM. And then on Internet, we want to make sure that our authentication key is the same, which it is. So here we need to set the IP address of our your backup server. So in my case, that's 192.168.1.6 and then 55414. Now, make sure you get the port in there, and to do that, you want to get in your semicolon. And then after that, you're just going to click OK. Now, yeah, here we go. We see that it's already found the server, and uh, it's not trying to connect to the internet server uh, because we gave it a local IP, and it's now indexing our hard drive and getting ready to back it up. So what if I go back over to the uh, dashboard here? What are we going to see? Well, we're going to see that it's right in the middle of backing it up, which is great. If we go over to activities here. We can see the total and uh, a live um, a live view of the status. So if we open this back up, we can see and it's pretty quick, you know, for sending uh, 275 megs uh, indexing and then uh, it's also compressing it as well um, yeah didn't really take any time at all we also get our speed here too well, that's good so keep in mind when you are backing up your system that uh, your backup does compress the uh, the uh, media that it is backing up okay so we see here that uh, it did complete if we go back to status, yeah, we see that uh, I'll give it a refresh. And I notice with this system, whenever you refresh or click the year backup icon, it will ask for the password again. So that is pretty much it for getting this connected. So how do we get this connected to the Internet? so that we can back up excuse me 
so that we can back up our, uh, say, like our portable devices while we're on vacation or uh, on a work trip and say we're bringing our, our laptop um, or, you know, wife, husband, kids, you know, they all go for vacation, bring their laptops and we want to make sure in case something gets lost, uh, whether it be files accidentally deleted or, um, you know, lost luggage uh, or, you know, someone steals your device. Um, this is a great way to make sure that uh, all your files are backed up even while you're away. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use uh, NGINX Proxy Manager, my favorite. I have uh, been fairly frustrated with this um, reverse proxy lately, but uh, I'm hoping that we won't have any issues here. So I'm going to add a proxy host and I've already set a domain name for this instance. And we're going to leave it HTTP and the IP address we need to put in as well as the port 55414. This is publicly accessible. So we're going to leave that the way it is and we're going to click save. Now I should be able to click your backup.familyio and we should be presented with the login screen, which we are not. I am so sick of this proxy manager. Everything I've added in the last few weeks has just not worked. No. And, uh, Update, I have given up on Jellyfin. Um, just not a fan of it. I'm sure it works great for other people, and I don't have anything against it. I'm just not a fan of it, so uh, we stop using it. Yeah. I think this uh, proxy manager has gone the way of the dodo bird and uh, gone extinct, even though I don't think the dodo is extinct anymore, but I don't know, I'm just talking. So, okay. I, um, I have not been able to figure this out. I don't know why it's doing this. I don't understand what its issue is. The only thing I can think of is oh okay let's try this let's give it a shot nope what was that nuts yeah so it does want the 55414 i know that it's not my ip address because uh all of these guys still work so i'm not understanding what the issue is Okay. All right. Well, I'm telling you right now that I am officially done with Proxy Manager. Um, it has been nothing but a problem the last couple of months, as uh, many of you have seen me struggle with this garbage Docker. Um, it's, it's like every internet facing project I've tried to do in the last month or two have gone to shit because NGINX Proxy Manager is running like a bag of ass. And um, while it seems to be fine running for other projects like my, uh, my weather application or my Ombi application, uh, it doesn't want to run for anything else and um i'm uh i'm i'm pretty fed up to be perfectly honest i'm i'm just beyond frustrated with it at this point it this i've been using nginx proxy manager for the better part of six years and um 
yeah, it's, uh, it's never done this to me. Like, I just don't. Because this thing doesn't want to be. <sighs> you know, it's looking like. You know, I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of tail scale. I, I I really don't like using it. Um, but it's looking like tail scale may be a better option. Um I mean my issue is the speed with tail scale. I don't get the speeds that I'm paying for, but I mean anything's better than this. Cause this is this is just a joke. Yeah, this is just a joke. Every single thing I do with NGINX Proxy Manager is just not working. I'm not going to waste your guys' time with this. Um, I need to look into tunneling. I, I really need to get into it because this, this is just, like, fucking stupid. Um, it's, yeah, something must be broken on, on, you know, the back end of this. I, I just, I don't even know anymore. I'm, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold up. What is this? Okay. Yeah. Don't know. Absolutely no idea. Okay, well, that's how to get your backup installed. If you're using TailScale, it's actually pretty damn easy to uh, uh, to utilize this Docker. So I'm going to end this here because I don't want to waste any more of your time and I don't want to rant and rave about how shitty NGI and XProxy Manager is as a Docker and application, as, as a network tool. Um, I am just so done with it. And um, yeah, so... Uh, going forward, I'm not going to be discussing anything uh, outside of the network um, until I've got tunneling figured out. So my apologies. I am beyond frustrated with this garbage. And uh, yeah, I need to figure out tunneling because I am I'm just done. I'm so fed up with this. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. You guys take it easy. I will catch you in the next one. My apologies for not getting this up and running the way that I promised I would. Uh, seems to be a rolling theme that, uh, you know, when I say I'm going to do something, uh, like get something internet facing, I don't. So yeah, pretty disappointed with myself right now. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching everyone. And I appreciate all the support, the comments, the likes, the subscribers, uh, the discord server community. Uh, you guys are all amazing. I absolutely love the community that we're building here and uh, I can't wait to see what the future brings. With all that nonsense being said or babbling uh, as I'm doing, uh, I will catch you in the next one. Take it easy, everyone. Oh, my life! <laughs>